Total calcium concentration in the blood is 10 mg per deciliter or 2 to 2.5 millimoles per liter. Total calcium is a collective term because calcium in the blood exists in two forms. Calcium that is bound to plasma proteins, mainly to albumins, and not protein-bound calcium, so-called ultrafiltrable calcium. 40% of calcium is binded to proteins and 60% of calcium is ultrafiltrable. From this 60% of ultrafiltrable calcium, the minor portion of calcium exists in the blood in complexes with onions. Because calcium is positively charged iron, in the blood it can bind to negatively charged onions as phosphate or citrate with formation of calcium complexes. From total blood calcium, 10% is present in the blood in complexes with onions. But the majority of calcium in the blood is present as free calcium, also called ionized calcium. And only ionized calcium is biologically active. 50% of total calcium in the blood is ionized calcium. All clinical symptoms due to hypocalcemia or hypercalcemia are caused by alterations in the level exactly of ionized calcium. So which factors affect the level of ionized calcium in the blood? First of all, it's proteins. Proteins consist of amino acids, and amino acids have negatively charged carboxy groups that can bind positively charged ionized calcium. So acute increase in proteins concentration leads to increase in protein-bound calcium and simultaneously to decrease in free ionized calcium. Important that all hormones that regulate calcium level in the blood reacts on the alterations in the level of biologically active free calcium, and they do not care about any other form of calcium. So, in case of proteins level increase, organism ignore increase in protein-bound calcium and reacts on decrease in ionized calcium. So, in response to decrease in ionized calcium, organism increase the secretion of pyrotheroid hormone and calcitriol, and they correct the level of ionized calcium in the blood. Also important that most frequently changes in plasma proteins level occur during a prolonged period of time. So hormones that regulate calcium homeostasis have enough time to correct ionized calcium level. So the net result of increase in plasma proteins is increase in protein bound calcium. Ionized calcium remains the same because hormones have enough time to correct calcium level. And important that total calcium increase because the fraction of protein bound calcium increase. Another factor are onions in the blood, because onions bind to ionized calcium with formation of calcium onions complex. So increase in onions level cause decrease in ionized calcium concentration in the blood. Decrease in onions concentration cause decrease in formation of calcium onions complexes, and this cause increase in ionized calcium. In contrast to proteins, onions concentration changes more rapidly. So for example, with acute increase in onions concentration, Organisms do not have enough time to rapidly increase secretion of parathyroid hormone or calcitriol. So, in this case, during the time period between acute increase in onions concentration and the effect of calcitriol and parathyroid hormone, the level of ionized calcium will be low. Another factor is blood pH. The concept here is that albumins consist of amino acids, and amino acids have carboxy groups with negative charge. So they can bind positively charged substances as hydrogen ions or calcium. If blood pH become more acidic, the amount of hydrogen ions in the blood increase. So the higher is the chance that albumin will bind hydrogen ion instead of ionized calcium. So this results in increase in ionized calcium concentration in the blood. But if pH increase, decrease in concentration of hydrogen ions provoke albumins to bind more ionized calcium and this results in decrease in ionized calcium concentration in the blood. So basically it's the major clinical factors that affect the calcium level in the blood.